Hi, our core word for this week is big. Here's the visual cue. And the gesture cue is just extending your arms like this. You can play that game so big either way. Um, if you have a device, you're going to go into describing words, which is the rainbow. Yeah. And it should be there. Oops, it clicked out of it. Hold on. It's going to be right there. It's the big square. So that is the big word and how they can communicate using their hands, using a picture, pointing to the picture. You got that in the handouts. Um, and then we also practice working on saying that sound. So everybody looks in the mirror and I use this little toy and we push it. You can hear what it says. B, B says book. B says book. Every letter makes a sound. B says book. Okay. So then they can look at me and they can try and copy, buh, buh, buh. Um, for some students, I do what's called oral motor activities. So I'll take a washcloth and we kind of stroke their cheeks, stroke their nose, stroke above their lips, and then we tap their lips and we kind of try and get that buh, 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 buh. We can do it like this too, from the middle, buh, 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 buh. So if your child really, uh, most of the kids um, in the EN2 classroom loved it. They smiled right away when we started to do that. But um, even if your child is in the EN1 classroom um, with, um, with Kathy, I think they might like that too. So it's just a really nice way to wake up their muscles, um, make them aware of how to move different parts um, and things like that. So that's something that we also do in some of our groups. Um, let's see, um, we do a large group activity. I shared the Google slide with you so you can see the video that we do. We always do a video with a song um, and we use the switch, we use the picture cue or the gesture. Um, so I might pause the song and ask a student to copy it and I'll give each of the students a turn to communicate the word big. And some kids might need my hands to help them make the gesture or they might need my hand to help them point to the picture. Um, so we can kind of just modify um, to your child's abilities. So that's what we did with that. Um, another thing we did was we read a story about big and it kind of went like this. The elephant is big, the giraffe is big. They would communicate the word and, hold on. And they would get a chance to actually hold on to the animal. And for most of the kids, I gave them two choices of the animals. And I would tell them, find the lion, find the giraffe, so that they were working on um, their vocabulary and understanding the words. Show me or point to the was a direction. And that's something that you guys can really work on at home. It's a very um, large direction that we use a lot. Um, and that's a way that kids can show what they know. They can look at the object, of course, um, but eventually we want them to reach for it or point to it or grab it. Um, so making those choices is very important. So that's something you can work on at home as well. Um, so I had all of the animals that went along with the story. We read that story. Um, then for our maybe one-on-one -on -one activities or our center activities, um, some students did a worksheet with the letter B we glued on pictures of objects. And so we had um, a picture and then I would find, um, so for example, I can just kind of show you um, sorting one, something like this. So these were the objects that all have B sounds at the beginning. So they're all B words that goes along with but, but big. Um, but I actually had objects as well. So I would pull, um, if you got a worksheet home with pictures glued on. They saw the picture and they saw the object together trying to match that so that they can understand that this picture symbolizes this object, but also just to work on that vocabulary for those objects as well. Um, so, so that was another activity that we did. Um, so activities that you can do at home that are a lot of fun. So sensory activities. So these are activities really that everybody loves, but especially children who are visually impaired, um, or hearing impaired, they're really going to 
rely on their body and their senses to be able to experience things. So some activities would be like big hug, big tickles, big jumps, um, and you can incorporate that word big. Um, do you want a big one or a small one? Um, and try and see how they respond. And if you say, do you want a big hug and they smile, then they're comprehending that. And then you can show them the difference by doing little. So they can really say, oh, I didn't want that little one. I wanted that really, really big hug or something like that. Um, in the Google slide, you will see um, some videos where we do big circles with our arms, big jumps. And that was really helpful for the kids at large group time because sitting and listening to a story is really difficult. So it was fun to get that movement in and copying, copying, copying. That's a first step for communication. If children can copy facial expressions, body movements, that's the first step. And that's actually the first step in play as well. Imitating play um, will come next, but imitating actions like coughing, sneezing, then eventually gestures like clapping, pointing, stomping your feet. Um, so yeah, work on those, um, that Google slide with those actions and get your child to imitate you and make it really fun and exciting and don't force them to imitate you, but really just try and make it um, a fun game. And you can even start the imitating so your child does something and you imitate them. And then that's sometimes how you get their attention um, and then that's how they'll want to play with you. Um, something else you can do is um, sort measuring cups sorting pots and pans, small and big. You have to stack them or put them in. And as you're doing it, you can say, we need the big one. This one is the small one. Um, so there's ways that they can really explore with um, sizes there. Um, something else that is fun is get a really small container and get a really huge container. Make sure it's see-through so the kids can see inside of it. That's helpful. You know, and sort things that are small. This is small, so it goes in this small container. This is big, it goes in the big container. Have it across the room. Grab the object, run across the room and see where should we put it. Um, getting that movement in, that running. If your kid's like a wagon, take them in a wagon and pull them in the wagon with the object and then drop it in. Um, so that's a fun game you can do. I think that's everything. I'm sorry that I got this video in at the end of the week. Um, on Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to plan on sending a video for the next word of the week, which is already the word come. So come here. We already kind of started that with some of the classes. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. But have a fun time working on the word big. And I hope you have lots of big laughs and lots of fun this weekend. Have a great weekend.